If I told you that there was a gang who gave kids drugs that caused them to kill themselves, you would be furious. If I told you that gang and those drugs also caused them to kill their fellow classmates or other children, you would be furious. If that gang was distributing drugs that caused 90% of the school shooters and mass shooters to act in that manner, you would be appalled. But because it comes from the field of psychiatry, we sit silently and say nothing. Because it comes from authority that we believe in, that we think is supposed to work on our behalf, we sit silently by and do nothing. The drug Ritalin is basically the same as cocaine. The drug meth, or, or Adderall is basically the same as meth. In this country, we have declared war on drugs, but we're giving kids cocaine and meth we're legalizing marijuana and supporting the poppy fields in Afghanistan. What happened to the war on drugs? The war became on us, and the war was very profitable. We spent about $190 billion on mental health in this country, and the result is more people homeless than ever been before, more people walking the streets, talking to themselves, stabbing people they don't know, running red lights and causing collisions. All of this is going on, and no one is telling us that these psychiatric drugs are the ones that are behind it. The kids are smarter than us. They listen to the commercials, and the commercial tell you, if you have a situation, ask your doctor for the drug. So the kids go and they tell their uh, uh, psychiatrist, I can't uh, get along in school. Me and my parents argue. I can't keep my room clean. I'm getting bad grades. Can I have Ritalin? They get the Ritalin, they take it to school, crush it up, and they sell it to other kids, snort it, because they know it's like cocaine. But the parents are the ones that's left out of it, and the kids know before we do. If we're looking at this type of thing going on, the question is, is why? And the reason is, is so much money being made in this industry that even though some of the top psychiatrists in the world have denounced the chemical imbalance of the brain theory, they're still using it as the model to be able to drug all of the children. I had a psychiatrist come to our headquarters at the Citizens Commission on Human Rights and say, when I told him, I said, hey, your top psychiatrist is the nice, nice chemical imbalance of the brain. I said, the people who created it are saying that it's not true. And she said, they're wrong. She, would, she didn't even believe the people she got the information from. That's how entrenched this thing is into our society. Some of you younger people have been seeing the commercials all of your life. If you, you cannot turn on the TV and watch a full program and not see a psychiatric drug commercial. They tell us that now they're treating every addiction as a mental illness. Now, if I cheat on my wife, the first time, she might forgive me. The second time, I got to get on the knee and cry and beg and scream and I don't leave me and, and she might stay with me. The thir third time, I go to my therapist and they say he's a sex addict. And that gives the excuse for me to be able to do it and it also makes it to where I never have to change the behavior. But if I was a real sex addict, how come I don't cheat in her face? if it was something I couldn't help do. So what they have done is they've made it where we don't have to be responsibility, 
take responsibility for what we do. So we can use these, these gaps of, of um, mental illness as a way to excuse behavior that we should regulate and check for ourselves. Now, I don't know how many of you uh, had old school parents. I, I don't know how many of you are in my age bracket, maybe 55 and going up, you know, and up a little bit more. <laughs> but my parents had the cure for ADHD. <laughs> in fact, since I'm a reverend on that one, you give me a man. Amen. Okay. They, we didn't have ADHD and bipolar and stuff when I was a kid. You, in fact, I'm just going to be honest about this. I think the reason I could do geometry is because my mother used to send me out to a tree. I know most of y'all don't know what that means. <laughs> and you had to be able to pull something off that tree that was big enough that she wouldn't go get her own, <laughs> but small enough you thought you could survive. <laughs> and I think I became a minister because on the way back from that tree, Y'all don't hear me. Uh, uh, on the way back from that tree, you learned redemption. <laughs> and you had to get before your mother, because uh, 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 your father wasn't going to have it. So you had to get before your mother and convince her that you were so sorrowful <laughs> that you heard the magical words, boy, get out my face. And you knew you had survived again. Now, I'm not saying that we need to beat and abuse kids and all of this stuff, but I'm a little old school. You know, if you spare the rod, you spoil the child. Because the whole idea, and this is what we got to be careful of, the whole idea of helping children was not to help the children. It was not to protect the children from abuse. It was to align so that the children would have to go to mental health. In 1965, they passed a law that allowed them to use drugs and stuff on these children. Then they went to the schools and told the children, I know this for a fact because they came to my school, and told us that our parents could not spank us, and if they did, called the police. They knew children who were unchecked and there was no discipline and there was no way to enforce would eventually develop personalities that just would run them up. And at that time, since you couldn't check your child yourself, you would have to refer them to mental health. They say a trap wouldn't be a trap if you could see it coming. So they laid the trap so that so many kids in California they did this in 65, 68, it got all around, right on the hills of that comes the Crips and the Bloods and all of these gangs. Kids are out of control. The young kids in this room, you guys are so lucky, you got time out. In my day, we got knocked out. <laughs> and that's the way our parents used to handle us. Now, now, if they actually wanted to help the children and pass the laws to help the children, then why do they use electric shock if a spanking is so bad? Y'all can say amen on that. It's like the police can use a baton, use a taser, and use deadly force if necessary to get you to comply. If you were in a courtroom and you won't behave, they can use whatever force needed to get you to behave. Mental health, drugs, children with mind-altering drugs that can cause suicide and things like that. They use electric shock, but the parents can't spank a kid. And we never look at this in its basic sense like that because we think because they use words like therapy 
and treatment that we think they know what the heck they're talking about. And so what we find is that the fruit of these people, you know, every now and then I'll quote the Bible, so I hope I don't offend anyone. But the fruit of these people, if you're going to know them by their fruit, veterans are killing themselves at 22 a day. In fact, I was talking with a psychiatrist and he said, well, they've been exposed to war. And, and so they come back with these mental illnesses, a PDAT. I said, but you guys are drugging people that's never been to war. You're drugging people that sit at desks. How, how much mental illness can you get at sitting at a desk? They don't have a defense. They don't have a means of coming back. I've debated psychiatrists from Morehouse University to UC Irvine, Harvard professors, and I got the same record as Mayweather. I haven't been beat. So the thing that we have to do is realize what Grant Cardone said yesterday. We were laughing in the back because I was going to talk a little bit about this. But David can beat Goliath. And I'm going to show you toward the end exactly what we have done. And I'm going to cut it a little short so you can ask any questions that you might want to ask. But the people are the ones that's going to have to rectify this. You think the government is supposed to protect us. Who you think is allowing it to happen? Why is it that in your business and and every other business, there's a conflict of interest. And you got to worry about, can you hire this person because you knew them and that. But the FDA is composed of people from the pharmaceutical companies. Everybody know you don't bite the hand that feeds you? Some of the people in the pharmaceutical companies are working for the pharmaceutical companies, more, make more money working for the ph pharmaceuticals than they do on their regular jobs. About 15 years ago, there was a study that showed that the pharmaceuticals spent about $13,000 for every physician in this country. Out here, Orlando Magic tickets, escapades, uh, what is that, the Disneyland Universal, all of these type of things they feed, they make big spreads at your party. They do all of these things, and, to, and the only defense for any medical doctor in here is I know that they are often very busy. So they get their information from the medical journals and from the pharmaceutical reps. They don't know that a lot of the medical journals are funded and backed by the pharmaceutical companies. So the information they are getting, because for, um, regular doctors are prescribing more of these drugs now than the psychiatric doctors, is they get the journals, they get the rep, they put them together and they say, this must be true. And then they give the stuff to you. Now, I think I mentioned already, 90% of your mass shooters and your school shooters are on these drugs. But we're attacking the guns and not attacking the cause. And as long as you are dealing with the symptom, you will never make the patient well. You must be able to say, what is behind this? I know they know, but even the news media cannot report it because the pharmaceuticals are so big that they can just threaten to pull the advertisement and scare all of the networks. That's how deep this is. They did not arrive based on their ability to perform. They arrived on their ability to pay their way into the system. If the parents are in trouble for paying for their kids to be at USC and so forth, then maybe somebody should be in trouble that there was this financial incentive that drove the whole mental health field into our lives. 
If you own group homes, you get more money if the kid is labeled with a drug. If you are a welfare parent, you get more money if you put your kid on disability. So you take the people who are least educated and guarantee that their children cannot escape that cesspool pool that they call ghettos. They know that you can test the reading level of the children in the third grade to know how much prison space you're gonna need, but you're drugging children who are one year of age. And now they're taking and doing some kind of ultrasound on pregnant women and determining that the child could be mentally ill before he's even born. This is not a game we can take lightly. It is not a game for the faint at heart. This is where the warriors have to raise up. This is where the people have to stand up because it gets worse. Now I'm gonna try to bring you back up at the end, but, but it gets worse. So now what they're saying to you, you walked into the psychiatrist's office because mom had died and you just couldn't get over mom's death. So you walked in and they said you were depressed. Then they gave you a drug and you started hearing things. Then they give you another drug and you started having suicidal thoughts. Where's the benefit of this? You can drug anybody and make them think they feel better. You give a kid cocaine or, Ad or, or Ritalin to slow him down, I don't know how that's gonna work. You give a person Prozac because they're depressed and then when you read the label, it says one of the side effects is depression. I don't know how that's gonna work. A person is threatening to kill themselves and you give them a drug that have a suicidal warning label on it, I don't know how that's supposed to work. It's not. The idea is to make people patience for life. And so as you go down that rabbit hole, it gets worse and worse and worse. Listen to the news. He killed himself. She killed her children. The shooter was, faced, was struggling. Listen for the word struggling or fighting mental illness. And then you know that it's a psychiatric drug behind it. But if I'm gonna kill myself anyway, then what good are the psychiatrists? I was on a job and there was some very evil people I was working for. And so I'm out of Compton, so city of Compton, so, so I didn't have to go into my Compton mode. I went off stress. They make you go to a psychiatrist. This is literally what happened. The psychiatrist says, what happened? I said, they're doing this, this, and this, and you know, they're letting this happen, they're not following these regulations, and because I'm the safety officer, I have to report these things, and they're attacking me because I have to report, but then if I don't report, and then it goes bad, they're gonna fire me for not doing my job, so I'm in a catch-22, blah, blah. He said, okay, I can prescribe you, not one, so I know he didn't like me, he wants to give me two drugs. I said, but wait a minute, I'm the victim. Why don't you go give them the medication, right? He says, I'm a psychiatrist, I write prescriptions. Those were his exact words. My sister had one of them, has one of those wild child girls who liked to use ecstasy and stuff and she flipped out one day and had to go into the hospital. So my sister being a social worker, licensed social worker, a program analyst for the probation department, she walks in and tells the doctor, she's been using ecstasy, don't give her a drug on top of a drug. You would think that would make sense. He said, 
she's 19, she belongs to me. She told that to a mother. Hate to say this, she told that to a black mother. <laughs> so by the time the head stopped, <laughs> she had been on the phone calling me. And I'm international spokesperson for CCHR. And I go down and I have a friendly chat with the psychiatrist. Told him that I'm writing a book on the positive and negative effects of these psychiatric drugs and I'm not finished. <laughs> and he got the idea that he could be in the book. And he bit his lip, walked over and wrote no drugs. There was another case. Person having this boyfriend, girlfriend dispute, the, the girlfriend's best friend is there egging it on and they going back and forth and he grabs a knife and he fakes like he's gonna cut himself and accidentally nipped. It wasn't the size of a pebble. The, uh, the, the police come, the, not the girlfriend, her friend says he tried to kill himself. They took him to the mental ward. This person's in my family too. Don't, don't judge me, okay? <laughs> don't judge me. This person's in my family too. He knows my stand and refuses to take any medication. They tell another member of our family that they can't evaluate him because he's not taking the drugs. Now some reverend might be in this room, called up and said, I work for the Citizens Commission on Human Rights, and if you don't know what we do to organizations like yours, Google it. Fortunately, he got released the next day. But that's only because they were connected to me. What do you do? When it's your child, or your parent, or your loved one, what do you do? Who do you go to? Who? You. Bam! There it is. There it is. So, we have to understand being controlled does not mean better. We do not have mental health in this country. We have mental control. If it was mental health, our IQs would expand. We would think clearer. We would think faster. But we give a kid or an adult a drug to slow them down so they are more manageable. That is control. That is not health. And we have to label it correctly so we can respond appropriately. The last part of the doom and gloom is that they know that these drugs do not work. You're starting to see commercials that say, in two thirds of the people, your drug, antidepressant drug, may not be enough. So you need another drug, and another drug. Is that my cue to, to step down, or? <laughs> huh? Okay, I'm out of the church now. You do that to me, I got to get off the stage, you know? <laughs> I, I'm supposed to have, I'm supposed to have 20 minutes left. Now, if it's that boring, just say. <laughs> Y'all all right? All right, so then in the Christian church, we say the devil is a liar, you know? All right, so, but, but the thing is, is that we don't have mental health, we have mental control. And all of this orchestrated to control. We think because the person becomes quiet that they're better. Actually, you're snuffing the life force from them, and that was the intention. In 1940, they made a conscious attack 
on religion. The field of psychology and psychiatry, if you look at its derivation, you see psych means soul and ology is the study of. So psychology is the study of the soul and psychiatry is the treating of the soul, but the only thing according to my Christian faith that can treat and study the soul is a religion. So if you are a religion, I'm talking to my Christian folk now, if you are a religion that denounces the spirit, that says that Jesus is narcissistic and delusional, who say publicly when asked by radio hosts, uh, what about the people who believe in their religions or believe in Jesus? He said, they better believe in their therapist. When you decide to destroy the morals of society and replace prayer with appeal, you have set yourself up to die as a group. Every great civilization has believed in God one form or another. In fact, every religion I know believes in the spirit, including Satanism. So if you have a religion that don't even believe in the spirit, and I hate to say it because they make it like it's academia, this is a hidden religion. And it is to take us out. They have in their literature, I've read it, where they have made a useful attack on a number of professions. And the easiest of those was the church and the educational system. And so now, since the medication is not working, or the drugs, they decided that you are treatment resistant and you are qualified for electric shock. Now, there are states in this country of America that are electroshocking children from zero to five years of age. They are people being electrocuted that are zero to five years of age in several states right here in America. Right here in America, they are electroshocking pregnant women causing miscarriages. If you corner them and ask them how the electric shock machine works, they don't know, but they do know it caused brain damage and heart failure and organ damage, and they know that it destroys the cells of the brain, so they do know that. But they have no way of regulating themselves. So CCHR is on a campaign to ban electroshock in the United States, period. So the, part of the reason that my voice is messed up, because it seems like every time I go into New York and I come out of there, then my allergies or whatever act all up and then I get hoarse and I can't speak and whatever. But we were there, we just spoke with legislators. I am personally activating some of the top civil rights organizations in this country on this fight. We have been fighting them. And back in 2003, I was with the Compton branch of the NAACP. I teamed up with CCHR. We went and lobbied every uh, congressman, every U.S. senator, and we had passed what was called then the Child Safety Medication Act, which later the name changed to something else, I forget, because I thought child safety medication was cool. But we got George Bush to sign that under federal law that said that parents could not be forced to put their kids on drugs as a condition for being in school. These are the things that CCHR is doing. So I've been leading protests all over the nation, in Africa, different places. In Africa, one of the kings told me that they are labeling the kids ADHD and giving them drugs and the only thing wrong with them is they're hungry. You will give a kid a pill and won't give them a sandwich. This is, this is the type of mindset behind this. And if you don't think electroshocking 
pregnant women is evil, if you don't think electroshocking children is evil, when the industry itself says your brain keeps developing until you're 26 years old. So now, you say, no, but I talked to my psychiatrist, and you're wrong, Reverend Shaw. This is brain stimulation. Okay, well, some of us boys, we've stuck forks in the light sockets when we were a kid, and, and, and that's, that's a, you, you did it too, Mike. That, that's 110 volts. And if you've ever done that, or touched a spark plug on a car, or something like that, and you, you understand that that is a kind of a life-changing event. <laughs> but imagine four times that much going through the brains of children. Because electric shock goes up to 460 volts. That's 110 in the light socket. So how does that benefit someone? And what have you done to that child's future? And so these are the things. Now, yesterday, Grant Cardone spoke a little bit about David and Goliath. And I'm going to talk about it a little bit because you have to understand that he is absolutely right. David can beat Goliath. We got that law passed with the child safety medication. It was only six of us. There were 600 lobbyists on the hill, and we beat them. So David can beat Goliath. So what it takes, as in the case of David, was people of courage. Do we wait to as our families or do we act now? Do we stand up and decide, like they said, what was the movie, Network or something? I'm mad as hell and I'm not gonna take it anymore. I can say that because they were saying pissed off and stuff like that, so. <laughs> so, but it's like what I've just given you information. You have gotten a lot of information from all of these great speakers, and some of them have been very good speakers. But the only thing that matters is what you're going to do about it. Are you going to sit it and watch TV while people are electroshocked? Are you going to get activated in your community and start exposing this? Or are you too afraid of disagreement, disapproval, and displeasure? You know, people say, you don't know what you're talking about. You know, uh, uh, I had somebody that did mental health and they did good. Okay. But they promised us when they brought these drugs to our community that it would help our children focus. Since they start giving these kids these focused drugs, we went from number nine internationally scholastically to number 31. So it was a lie. So it's time for us, the people. We hear a lot of talk, make America great again. Well, it can only be great again if Americans are great again. And so we must stand up and do the things that we need to do to make this change. Now, some of you say, I'm too busy. My money is wrapped up. But you can go out to that booth. It's right next to Bob's booth. So if you go and looking for Bob, we're right next to it. You know? And you can sign a petition to ban electroshock. You can make a pledge to support CCHR so I can be in places like this fighting for you. You can do that if you don't want to stand up and be on the front line. Everybody's not a soldier, but somebody funds the soldiers. So if you want to do something about this, and now, if it's okay if they're electroshocking people, but let me tell you what they're doing. I'm, how much time I got left? Cause, okay. In New York, next to Columbia University, or actually connected to Columbia University, they just made the Brain Mind Behavioral Center. Beautiful building. They attract the kids with sports and games and stuff like that. But they're doing clinical trials. And they put it strategically by the housing projects where the people are struggling financially. 
so that they could get the mothers who can't pay a light bill or whatever to bring their children in and they can get paid for the clinical trials, which include putting electrodes in the brains of the children. And if you leave them too long, then it grows over and then you can't even remove it. And one psychiatrist was caught bragging that you could make people jiggle and jump while you're sitting in your office, their office. What, what is this? So all I'm saying to you, and I'm gonna take some questions if you can, and, or whatever, and answer whatever, but all I'm saying to you, if you do nothing else, find a way to support us so we can fight for you. You're setting bones, many of you. You're correcting spines, but this electroshock stuff is actually destroying people. Oh yeah, they say it's better now than it used to be. Well, let me just tell you, the reason it appears that way is because now they give you a paralytic drug to make sure your body don't jump. It's not that your body's not going through the trauma. It just doesn't display it. And they're using more voltage now than they used to when most of you thought it got banned. And it's leaving people in a crippled state. Now, if you're a female, you say, what does that have to do with me? Two thirds of all electroshock in this country is done on females. You say, well, I'm elderly. 50% of all electroshock is people 65 years of age or older. Why do you think I'm doing this? I'm 63, be 64 this year. I'm trying to get this changed before I hit the mark. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm coming up on it kind of fast there. Years ago, it wouldn't have been important. Now, wait a minute, this is my group. So I just want to, to say to you, look, all that is necessary for the forces of evil of this world to win is for enough of the good people to do nothing. So let's do something. Contribute any way you can. Make sure you see that booth out there. Make sure if you do nothing else, sign a petition. Final thing, a lot of times people say, I don't know who's behind it. I don't know what's the, this is what I know. If you're not fighting against it, you're fighting for it, okay? If you think it's okay to electroshock children, because you think some group is behind it, then you need to examine yourself and you know, hopefully you don't have to find out the hard way. All you want to know is the information pure. If it is true, then we must do something about it. And so with that, if there's any questions, anything that anybody wanna ask, I hope I can ask it. And uh, anybody in the room that might have a particular expertise, if somebody asks something that's technical and you know the answer, then you can say, I got the answer, or just kind of raise your hand up a couple of times so I know. Go ahead. If you go online, like at cchr.com or something, and do a donate thing, and you have like a 50 million Yeah, we do, we do. Um, cchr.org, oh, .org, and not only that, uh, all types of videos and information. We have some award-winning documentaries. We have the hidden enemy that, that goes into how they're um, uh, causing the veterans to kill themselves. We have uh, info on electric shock. It's a whole bunch of things. It's a whole website and stuff, and um, you could do it that way. But, you know, I like coming to these conventions. So I like to get a product so I can brag on the way to the airport to people that we, we, we kicking some butt out here and we motivated some people and we got them, you know, but if you can't do anything financially today, you most definitely could do that. But we do know that when we procrastinate or put something off, we never get to it. You know how we judge other people by what they do, but we judge ourselves by what we intend to do. So, you know, that, that's, you know, the kind of the thing on it. So we need to, operate as if it's an emergency so that we can, you know, stop it before it's truly, truly an emergency. Because they're actually now trying to install, somebody sent me a picture of it, these little head things to where while you're at the spa, you can be getting an electric shock. And you can electric shock yourself. And they're developing them for the babies where they sleep, you put the little helmet on them and then you have the electric shock going through the brain. Electric shock causes grand mal seizures. Every doctor in the world will tell you that 
is brain crippling. So, you know, don't get fooled by this stuff. Yes, ma'am. Mm hmm. Yeah, and, 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 and I'm glad you mentioned that because if you pay close attention, every solution seems to kill you. You know, so that's evidence they don't know what the heck they're doing. And if they knew what they were doing, I wouldn't be able to beat them in debates. And I, oh, I forgot to do this. I do it at every talk. If you know a hotshot psychiatrist that wants to debate me publicly at this forum or any other forum, pack the house and watch what happens to them. Because they are not operating on truth. They have the greatest advertising and marketing plan that you have ever seen. But if it was based on results, they would finish at the bottom of the barrel. Yes? Uh, can we uh, download the graphics together to find better? Is there a website? Is there a website? Uh, yeah, it's on YouTube. Okay. You can get it off of YouTube. Okay, cool. Who, somebody else had something. Was it over there? Was it you? Okay. The first thing you can do if you hear somebody say, oh, they want to evaluate my kid and they're diagnosing them, say, hey, have you heard of this website? Or you heard of cchr.org? Go on there and look at that. I mean, my job is to do what I do right now. I go all over the world. I go and I educate people on what's going on in mental health. If you have a big enough group and you want to fly me out, people are doing that too. It's like, but we can educate. But the best thing to do is for you to educate yourselves on the issue so you can speak. Trust me, if they say, you say, oh yeah, 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 I, I've been studying up on this and I've been researching it. Use those words, that's what scares the psychiatrist. You say, I've been researching, because they know that if you research it, you know they're lying. So you have to get people to go to the, to the uh, websites and look at the side effects of things. Every drug you take, should be checked out thoroughly to make sure they're not giving you a psychiatric drug. Let me show you an example. How many of you have heard of the drug Chantex? You seen the commercials? Now, Chantex is a psych drug repackaged. It was well brutal, and they repackaged it and made it Chantex because they're trying to treat every addiction as a mental illness, including cigarette smoke. So. What they're doing, if you look at the commercials, they mentioned twice to three times that this thing could kill you. Okay, you could have suicidal thoughts, there's certain things that are permanent that could be life-threatening and all of this. So they, in their wisdom, have given you a drug that will cause you to blow your brains out today so you don't die 30 years from now from cancer. How is that supposed to work? The question is, ask yourself, how is this supposed to work? And you may be amazed at the answers that you get. It's not supposed to work. Absolutely. And we have award winning, you can put your name down, and you can purchase these things from us. Uh, some of them are outside that you can purchase. Um, just get part of the movement. Just don't sit it out. I would rather you be against me than to not participate at all. Because you're my enemy in silence if you don't help. So 
You know, it's better to see your enemy than to have an enemy because some people say, I've had people come up to me and say, oh, I think the children should be electroshock. And I say, okay, well, lead the way. I believe if all the psychiatrists gave themselves a few rounds of electroshock, they won't remember to shock the rest of us. You know what I'm saying? Am I like, did I go over? Uh, I, I, I tried not to get into the reverend thing at all. You know what I'm saying? It's just, all right, uh, two more questions and that's it, right there? It's funny you say that. We're actually developing that so that I can take a PowerPoint somewhere and then I don't have to think off the top of my head. I can, I can cheat. But we're actually developing one. But you can still, the information is so easy to access on the internet, you know, cchr.org, or you can go through YouTube and get a lot of these videos and stuff. And not just CCHR, there's a whole lot of people now starting to become aware and stand up that are standing up against these drugs and things like that. Last question in the back back there. Autism? Right. Yeah. Well, the, 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 the thing is, is this, and I'm not an expert in autism. I do know because when you're in fields like I'm in, you come across a lot of information and a lot of data. I do know if they would just spread the shots out over three years instead of just overwhelming the person with the shot, that it makes a big difference and the autism rate would go down. I know they also, if they got the shots after three years old, the autism rate would go down. However, most of us, see, we're back in the society where we don't want to experience anything. Most of us had chicken pox, most of us had measles, most of us had mumps, and then you were immune to it. You know, it, it's like you don't have to overwhelm the body with all of these things, and you didn't have the autism that you have now. But our particular field is a specific type of um, we deal specifically with mental health abuse because there's other groups out there fighting the vaccines and stuff, but there's not enough groups fighting this problem that we have in uh, psychiatric abuse. All right, with that, thank you so much.